Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, aka Stitcherista here on YouTube, and today is Monday, July 18th. So the weekend was good. Saturday we went to the park, and we were there. We packed a good lunch. We were there from, I want to say, 12 until 3. And a storm was coming, so we decided to leave. And we stopped at the dollar store on the way home. Because Bill wanted to look for, like, containers for his boat. And so he found those. And then we got home, and I just relaxed. I'm almost finished my book. And we watched a movie. So we watched The Rabine. I had wanted to watch it. I had rented it last week and meant to watch it, and I forgot. And it stars well-known people like Terry Polo, Eric Dane, um, the guy that was stuck, that was Fitch in Nurse Jackie. Oh, I can't think of his name. Anyway, it was him. And the movie was good, except you never really found out why, which I hate that. I really hate that. So we watched it. And we were just like, okay, I mean, it's based on a true story. So, yeah. So that was Saturday. Sunday, we got up. We went to the grocery store fairly early. Came back and Bill went to cut the grass and I started to pack my bag for the retreat, believe it or not. I have all of my clothes packed that I'm taking and I, oh, I don't have my stitching. I need to grab it so I can show you. Wait a minute, hold on. Okay, so um, I'm packing my smaller suitcase. I mean, I have a big suitcase, which... I'll probably take that on our cruise next year because I'm going to have to pack like dresses for every day for the dinner that we go to. But for this, I don't want to take this big fat suitcase. So I'm bringing my smaller suitcase, which basically fits my clothes. And I am just going to wear my tennis shoes every day. So just the shoes I have on. And yeah, so I've started to do that packing and the only food I'm bringing, so we went to the grocery store yesterday, and I'm going to bring six of my energy drinks. I'm going to put those in my stitching bag, because I'm bringing my Vera Bradley stitching bag. And the only food I'm bringing, because they have a continental breakfast in the hotel every day, so I'll eat breakfast there. And then lunch and dinner. There's a Longhorn Steakhouse restaurant in the hotel, which is good. Uh, there's a McDonald's. Um, I, you know, I told Bill, I said, I'm not going to be ridiculous with just saying F it and I'm just going to eat all kinds of crap. I said, but I'm also not going to berate myself because I'm going to eat a slice of pizza or I'm going to eat McDonald's or whatever. I mean, there's plenty of places around there. There's even like a Panda Express. So maybe we'll get Chinese one night. I don't know. But um, I'm bringing these crackers because I like to have maybe some stuff in my room. These are really good. Good thins made with rice. I like the jalapeno and lime ones. Really good. And then I'm bringing these Fiber One bars, which are chocolate, caramel, and pretzel. They're pretty good. So, yeah, just to have like a little treat. So, but yeah, so yesterday when we got back and Bill was, he went over and let the cat out and, and dealt with that. And I packed up my projects. So all the floss. Now what's nice is all four projects that I picked, none of them have the same floss, which is unbelievable really because usually they overlap some, but they don't. Um, and the floss that I had for one of the projects I've already pulled out because I'm going to start it today because I finished stitching yesterday. So I did all of my paper, cut all the paper, I'm even bringing um, some origami paper because I'm going to make one of my floss boxes there for me to use. Because if I put this in my suitcase or in my bag, it's going to squish it. And no. 
So here are the papers I've cut. That's for one. That's for one. That's for one. And then the other one is the one I'm actually going to start today, which is the one I colored with the marker, with the Copic marker. So that was the washi tape that I picked out. But it is the Coffee and Friends by Hands On Design. It's this one. So I wound up changing every color except the white and the 309, the 309, which is the pink. I changed the blue, I changed both the browns, I changed the orange. So here are the colors I picked, which I think are going to look pretty good. I picked 300 and 301, 3842, 3845, the 740, because if you look, where's the paper? I was afraid the original orange that they had picked, which was 9, 922, it was going to blend in too much with the orange on this paper. But I think these will look good up against that. Yeah, I think it's going to look good. So I'll probably do some stitching today because I've gotten everything done that I need to get done today. The video is the last thing I need to get done besides dinner, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I spent some time stitching yesterday. I also took a two-hour nap yesterday, believe it or not. But yeah, so I did finish stitching. I love that I can just put this in the stitching bag and it just holds everything. I'm just trying to get situated here. I did finish the stitching for the plant blow groom. No, that is not what that is. Plant and blow and groom. No, 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 no. It's plant grow bloom. Good Lord. <laughs> oh, we probably all needed that laugh, didn't we? So, <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, my aim is to leave out of here on Thursday about 11 o'clock because I mapped it and the, the ride's a little shorter than I thought. It's only two hours and 42 minutes. I thought it was like three and a half hours. So that's good. And there's about $20 in tolls, which I have to look that up because Bill was like, I think the tolls are like electronic where you just, you'll get a bill in the mail. Well, I need to make sure because I don't want to be stuck, right? I forget. I mean, it's been three years and I know that in Maryland they changed the way they did tolls. So, but yeah, it'll put me there about, It'll put me there earlier than I think I can check in, but maybe they'll let me check in early. It'll put me there, barring traffic, about 1.45-ish. Check-in is not supposed to be until 3 o'clock, but I remember I got there earlier last time and they let me check in. So, here now this page, I think, is one of my favorite ones I did. I sort of followed a layout a little bit. And um, I think it turned out really cute. So what I did was, here's the stitching, right? These strips that are diagonal is scrapbook paper that I cut strips out, glued them down, and then just cut the edge. I have to glue that little edge right there. It's like not cooperating. Um, but I just cut the edge and then overlapped it and then just cut along here. And then just put with a glue stick, all of these little flowers, the butterflies. I think it turned out really cute. I really like how that layout turned out. So that is the next one. Now where the coffee page is going to be, no idea. Um, I have two pages in the front that I can use, like I have this page and this page that I haven't used. So maybe I'll use one of them. I'll have to wait and see. I don't know because the other ones I've used in a row. Yeah, I definitely need to cut that or glue it down. It's annoying me. I have to glue it down. Okay. 
So that was accomplishment yesterday. And that's really it. Yeah. Um, excuse me. For dinner, Bill and I have been trying to find something else to make. So we decided to do pulled chicken in the crock pot. Now, I was off work today, so it was up to me. Um, I only do laundry every other day now. I don't do laundry every day anymore, which is nice. Today was laundry day. Today I did my nails. Today was a whole bunch of stuff like that. So I found a recipe of multiple recipes online where people use a can of Dr. Pepper, garlic, onion, and the chicken. But none of these recipes gave amounts, like how much Dr. Pepper, how much chicken, I mean, how much spices. So I just winged it and I'm hoping it's going to turn out. We're going to see. We have low carb rolls that we're going to use. Um, yeah. So fingers crossed for that. <laughs> okay. So I know I didn't get to read the unfuck yourself entry for Saturday and Sunday. So I'll read that now. Relationships are easy until you add people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, here's a good example. So I really don't talk to my mom very much. I mean, it, I've never, we've never had the kind of relationship where we talk every day. And I realized I hadn't really talked to her in a while. So today, and we normally talk by Facebook Messenger. She'll send me like funny videos and stuff like that. Now, when my grandparents were sick, we talked on a daily basis just about just because she was basically losing her mind, right? Um, so I messaged her today and I said, hey, how's everybody doing? Um, and I told her about my jaw, how it's better. I'm going to the retreat, just like just filling her in on what's been going on. And so she wrote me this long message and it was nice to kind of catch up with her and, you know, yeah, I need to do that every couple days. But sometimes it's very easy to just get, you know, wrapped up in your own stuff and your own things and not check in with people. You got to check in with people. Like when I've done this video, I'm going to check in with Jill today because her and I talk just about every day. Okay, so today's Unfuck Yourself entry is to fear is to be alive. It's your job to understand that and to push past it. Okay. And we will do a small miracle story today. Let's see. Okay, not, not a long one. In 1991, Deborah Robinson was dating Ed Wilson. They had been seeing each other for over three years. Although he had popped the question several times, she had avoided giving him an answer. Fearful, conflicted, and anxious about tying the knot, she kept stalling. As a result, she was tormented and miserable. One night, Chuck Anton, an old friend of her deceased father, Wayne Robinson, had a dream. In the dream, Wayne Robinson said, Chuck, do me a favor. My daughter Deborah is going out with someone and this person is her destined one. Please find her and tell her that she should marry him and that she's going to have a wonderful life. This match has my blessing and for once she should listen to her father. Chuck Anton woke up with a muffled scream. He hadn't seen Deborah Robinson since her father had died 10 years before. Shaken, he roused his wife and recounted the dream. She told him it was ridiculous and advised him to go back to sleep. He followed her counsel and soon forgot the entire episode. A week later, Wayne Robinson reappeared in a new dream. Chuck, he expostulated, wagging an accusing finger. You didn't do what I requested. How many times do I have to ask you to tell my daughter to marry the young man she's seeing? Once again, Chuck awoke with a start, but this time he resolved to consult his priest. Look, said the priest after Chuck poured out his heart, find the girl and ask her if she's currently seeing anyone seriously. If she isn't, say nothing. If she is, you have a responsibility to deliver her father's message. The following Sunday, Deborah Robinson lay on her bed weeping. The night before, her younger sister Susie had gotten engaged. 
Although she was happy for her sister, the engagement had undeniably served to accentuate her own sense of aloneness and her anxiety about her relationship with Ed. Deborah was in agony and cried out, Please, God, help me figure out what to do. I beg you, send me a sign. And at that precise moment, the telephone rang. Deborah, an old familiar voice, inquired, This is Chuck Anton. Dot, dot, dot. Like he went on to say about his dream. Three months later, Deborah and Ed were married, and they have been living a fairy tale life ever since. So the comment. Many of life's decisions are painfully difficult to make, for none of us know what lies ahead. The jolt of coincidence can nudge us in the right direction. In this story, what was so comforting to Deborah was not merely the wonderful message from her father, but that it arrived just when she needed it and was most receptive to it. What impeccable timing. At the precise moment when Deborah was feeling particularly lost, she received a loving, nurturing, supportive communique from her father that told her, I'm with you, you are not alone. I think many times a lot, I think stuff like that happens more than we give credit for. I think we just ignore it a lot of the time. But I wanted, one last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is relationships and spouses and significant others. So Bill and I are very different people. We are. Um, you could almost go so far as to say we're opposites, right? And, you know, they always say opposites attract. Well, we were watching King of Queens yesterday. Um, they have all the seasons on the Peacock app or, yeah. And I subscribe to it just so I can watch that show. And I absolutely love that show very, very much. He likes it too. So when we were having dinner last night, we were watching some episodes. And the one episode that we watched was where their bed broke and they wound up getting twin beds from Deacon, Doug's friend. And the beds kept rolling, so they kept them separate. Well, they liked it so much that they started doing everything separate. Like, Carrie wanted to go see this romantic movie, and Doug wanted to see this comedy. So they separated and saw each movie. And then she wanted to go get, like, a cup of coffee, and he wanted to get wings at some place. And they were right next to each other, so they split and they did that. And then it just seemed to carry over into all other aspects of their life. But at the end of the show, Carrie was missing Doug, Doug was missing Carrie, and they came back together and everything was fine. And Bill's like, oh my God, that's us, totally. And, you know, it got me thinking and I'm like, you know, if we're that separate, why are we married, right? And I said this to him and he just looked at me and I said, look. There was also another episode of King and Queens that where they were applying for a mortgage and I forget why they had been fighting or something. I can't remember, but they were in the mortgage officer's office and they each, Carrie was like, okay, we're going to make a list of 10 things that we like. And if none of them agree, we won't go through with this and we'll just split up something like that. Well, they weren't, none of the ones were agreeing and they got down to the very, very last one. And Carrie said something like, you know what? It doesn't matter if this last one matches because we love each other, blah, 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 and all that stuff. And so I told Bill that and I'm like, you know, when it comes down to it, I don't want to be married to someone that's exactly like me because I feel like it would be fairly boring, right? And I need like Bill's calmness sometimes to my storm. And I said to him, I said, let's be honest. If I was someone who loved to fish and loved to go on the boat, you would never have any time to yourself because I would always be with you doing it, right? And he's like, yeah, that's a good point. And I'm like, instead of focusing on the myriad of things that were different, you know, different about us, how about focusing on do you care about me? You know, do I care about you? Do we share the same pretty much core values? We come together on some things, you know, I don't know. I'm just of the mindset that I don't need someone up my ass 24 seven. And I don't think he wants that either. And it's like, I don't know. I just, I don't know anybody. I don't know any couple that is exactly alike. Nobody. 
Women and men are different. They're different. They're different for a reason. But yeah, I'm just like, I don't know. He just made it sound like it was a bad thing. And I'm like, but is it really? I don't think so. Like, here's a good example, too. Bill has been applying to get his gun permit. And it has cost hundreds of dollars and lots of paperwork. So he had to fill out this application. And we did it on Saturday. After much trial and error and trying to figure it out, we figured out he was even on the wrong site. Now, this took us like easily an hour to do it. If he would have been married to someone exactly like himself, he would have never had that application filled out. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. Like, you know, you compliment one another. Yeah. Um, and a good note, the washer and dryer is working really well. And we think we have our old washer and dryer sold. I'm hoping, I mean, even even for like 200 bucks. Um, he said the person's gonna come get them. We Nobody was biting on his Facebook ad. And uh, yeah. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down below about the opposite thing. If you and your husband or you and your wife um, are like that and how you make it work because I'm just really curious. Because like I said, I feel like, like I said, I don't want to be married to someone who's exactly like me. I've never dated someone who's exactly like me. I've never been in a long-term relationship with someone who's exactly like me. Yeah, no. Okay, so I hope you guys are all having a good start to the week. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.